So then I had a problem on my hand. I had, I had more evidence of a viral infection and really not much of a cure. But Naglase connected me up with this article. And I actually read this article before I read much about Naglase. Uh, immunotherapy of HIV-infected patients because I've been studying HIV as a chronic viral infection for a long time. And Natasha's been studying HIV as, a, as one of those things that dysregulates calcium channels also as a, as a model of things that may be going with autism. And that connected me up with GCMF, this GC protein, which is a blood protein derived macrophage activating factor. So, uh, and then Dr. Yamamoto refers to uh, GCMF as the most potent um, form ever discovered which produces no side effects in humans. That's kind of nice. Um, it's not quite that simple in autism um, because our kids are just ever so much fragile than HIV patients. Um, and we have to be careful with how to use them. So he used 100 nanograms per week by muscular injection in HIV and cured HIV, just cured it. Um, so ultimately, I had to find a stale and pure form of GCMF that was active. Um, this is my recent trip to the laboratory to inspect their quality control um, to meet the scientists. They're, of course, brilliant, talented, dedicated, hardworking folks that um, have created a, a fantastic lab. Um, I think they've renamed themselves first to me in GCMF. Um, went through the lab and it's, it's absolutely stunning. And I refer to it as a boutique laboratory because it's a laboratory that really is dedicated just and only to the production of high quality GCMF. And then um, the one thing that's critical with GCMF is that, um, and this is the website from where I sourced all the stuff in my study. Um, verified GCMF activity. So this is where you need to be able to show that the GCMF activates macrophages and has generates the ability to kill cancer cells. And uh, this work has been done with Professor Ruggiero in Italy to verify that in fact this product does that, um, which satisfied me in terms of sterility, purity, and capacity to do that. And this paper is now in submission for peer review. This uh, title's a bit awkward, sorry about that, but um, initial <laughs> observations of elevated alpha and acetobactose amidase activity associated with autism and as their reductions from the protein macrophage activating factor injection. Um, I couldn't think of a way to make that easier. <laughs> um, other than, hey, I found something that may help some kids with autism, and maybe more than just some kids. Um, so let's look at the data on this. So 40 kids all together, 8 males, 32 females, 4 to 1, surprise, surprise. Um, the average pre-treatment agonist activity was almost 2, uh, which um, the lab, this is from ELN, European Laboratories of Nutrients, their reference range goes up to 0.95, which I think is probably way too high. A realistic reference range is probably about 0.5 or less, especially for children. But Anyway, you cut it, 1.93 is high, it's certainly higher than what's in the literature, it's higher than the laboratory norm. And then this was just a follow-along, this was a retrospective analysis. This wasn't a control going forward study, so I didn't have a specific endpoint. It's just whenever the mom's and dad's could get me another specimen of Naglase to look at, I want to see what the changes were over that period of time. So the kids varied quite a bit in weeks. Um, the doses were variable in terms of the total number of doses they had as a result of that. But we brought the kids down dramatically from 1.93 to 1.03 on, on average. Very, very large statistical significance to that. Um, some of the children were up as high as 4 and then all the way up to 7.8, which is well into the range of what you'd see with um, acute cancer patients and uh, acute HIV patients. Pretty outrageously high levels. And we repeated them several times with Photoshop, actually. When I first started to get these results back, I was like, oh my god, this is way higher than I thought. It was very you know, satisfying because it, it made me at least think that my hypothesis about chronic viral infection was accurate. Um, and it may be that there's other contributors to Naglase, including um, gut microbiota, but that has not been fully demonstrated yet. We then used the CGI scale, uh, Clinical Global Impression of Improvement, published in DMC in 2007. It's in open access. It's an accepted scale for psychiatric interventions. It's a um, 6 to 0, minus 1 to minus 6 scale that basically says at 0, you're unchanged. I would say that 1 and minus 1 are unchanged. No, I said I consider these all non responders, but 1, 0, minus 1. We had nobody below minus 1 at, in this first group. And then we had no 6s, but we had some pretty interesting results after just 
one retesting. So over an average of about 12 to 14 weeks in terms of actual doses, we had an 85% response rate. So if you take out this 15% of the minus, there was one or two minus ones, a few zeros and some ones, you take out this 15% of the group, um, you wind up with an 85% response rate. And even if you take the twos out of saying, no, that really wasn't that much, it was, it was some improvement, but not really as robust as we want. This population winds up being substantial. 40% are in the four to five range, which for any drug, for any psychiatric drug, would be dramatic. It's way better than what got Risperdal approved for the treatment of autistic irritability. So that's amazing. And this group, the, the test population has gone on, and many of this population have gone on to basically lose the label of autism. They don't have autistic distinctions anymore after sometimes as little as 20 weeks with the therapy, but some of them have required longer therapies. Some of them have been just fine when we stopped the intervention of giving them the weekly GCMF shots. Others have completely fallen apart and need to go back on therapy again, which is unfortunate, except for the people who make the material. Um, but they've been, let me just tell you, I, I, David Nooks is here, and I managed to twist his arm on the car ride back uh, from the hotel today. I like, what are you going to do for his moms and dads who are going to get all excited and hear about this? And so if you're a member of Treating Autism, and most of you are, he's decided to offer you a 25% discount if you're interested in getting started on this. And I would recommend doing that. I wouldn't recommend trying to do this on your own. I really do think you need physician support for this, and um, we need physicians who are trained in the use of this substance and, and potential issues with it. It's a very powerful activator of the immune system. And unlike HIV and cancer patients, it takes usually tiny doses in autism. And I don't have a cookbook recipe yet uh, in terms of um, how to dilute it out. Um, uh, my colleague that I work very closely with in Italy has a blog post on um, the gcmf.eu um, website where he talks about using as little as two nanograms. I've gone down to as little as a tenth of a nanogram in some children and seen results. So it's extremely potent in terms of its ability to work for children. 